bid you farewell, Eldorado, for it is time for me to leave you. I'm going to rejoin my ancestors. I know that you will be successful and that the prophecy will be fulfilled. Inti will return. Welcome back to Inca and the toughest space battle in the game. Agiri has sent out his fleet of galleons to make mincemeat out of us and well, let me just quickly explain how this fight works. The galleons will fly at you and once they are within range they will turn to face you with a broadside and fire absolutely huge cannonballs that will rip your ship to shreds. The only way to survive is through a very, very careful hit and run tactic where you rush at a given vessel while it has its front or rear aimed at you and then as soon as it starts to turn or you get too close get the hell out of there repeat endlessly or until all three galleons are destroyed this fight is going to take a while since the galleons have a absolutely ridiculous amount of health we are talking several hundred hit points in addition to that great care must be taken since you really cannot afford to get hit further, further exacerbating the problem is the fact that the galleons have collision boxes larger yes than the hit boxes as you just noticed basically turning away at the last moment is actually a few moments too late you will take damage by simply passing near the things now you might ask why I am sticking so close to these things instead of gaining some proper distance and firing at them well the thing is now if you get too far away from a given galleon it will teleport through you causing damage to a position in front of you so yes the game literally punishes you for trying to run away from these clearly incredibly powerful opponents by automatically damaging you Thank you, Cocktail Interactive. I think I realize where the first syllable in your company name comes from. A rare occurrence there, seeing all three galleons on screen at the same time. And we have one galleon down! I will admit that it took me approximately 7 or 8 tries in order to get the first galleon kill. But since I have been able to polish my technique a bit, it has become a lot easier. Now, let's see, we have one galleon left. The problem with this particular galleon is that it apparently has almost twice the health of the other ones for whatever reason. This one galleon takes almost a full minute to destroy despite my best efforts. Also, a, another thing of note, do not try to aim at the hull, because that actually causes the hits not to register. You need to aim for the sails when possible. It makes no sense, but this is Inca. Yeah. 
Yep. It's still intact. I really should have dodged that cannonball, yes, but uh, what can I say? There's only one galleon left and I decided to take some risks. Really bad idea in retrospect, but uh, thankfully it works out. There you saw the galleon teleport ability and yes, that just passed straight through me. Thank you, the lamb. Right, with the galleons out of the way, we can head on down to the planet. For the... is it third time now? Well, let's see what mysterious puzzles the Mayan maze has to offer. Puzzle time. Uh, um, hmm. Yeah, basically you will not be getting this one in a hurry unless you have a decent idea of what's going on. Basically you need to click on the plaques in the correct pairs in order to make the eyes light up and once they do you need to put one of these golden balls into said socket. Of course me being an idiot I forget that I actually have to open these little eggs first. Right so, lower right, upper left. Let's see if we can actually... Ah, there we go. And before you ask, yes, it has to be the right color as well. How do you know which is the right color? <laughs> well, of course you don't. This is Inca. Alright, let's try lower left and... And yes, if you're not fast enough, the plaques reset. There we go, let's put the uh, red sacred egg over here. And finally, well, the middle plaques. I said the middle plaques. And there we go! Our reward is this golden disc. And what do we do with it? Well, we need to use it on the sun buttons again. And that opens the door to the Biggest maze in the game. Yay. Welcome to the main maze. A maze in not one, not two, but three entire sections. This place is pretty ridiculous, so I'm just going to clip just edit the clip here. Right, as you can tell I have once again literally murdered every single person in the entire maze. And funnily enough, I still haven't found my way to the first puzzle room. And it takes me another three or four minutes to find it. As you can tell from by the map there, I have been running around a lot and... Uh, well... I keep running around quite a bit longer. Another dead end. Come on. Going to the right. And yes. We are rewarded with a second section of maze. Wonderful. Our progress seems to be blocked here by some golden spikes. So how to get rid of those? Well, 
we go down this right door here. Heading down one floor. Into this room. And turn this hourglass around. Intuitive, right? That and we can proceed into more maze. Good lord. Who thought this was a good idea? We have found a way to the very first puzzle room. Or well, perhaps I should say lava room because... Ah. Hmm. Right. This wall looks awfully suspicious, so let's start out by grabbing these Tumi blades. So, what do you think we do next? Well... The thing is, these stones are capable of being moved. So the idea of this puzzle is to move the stones in such a way that you gain a clear path to the top. Easier said than done, of course. It helps not being an idiot like me as well. Just watch me fluster around like that. Jeez. Hilariously enough, this is not the most difficult puzzle in this room. It is going to get even more annoying in a moment. Right, we have a ray of light and... Well, we all know what rays of light are about, right? You need to reflect them somehow. So let's place the Tumi Blade here. Now, funnily enough... You can put these down in the right order to get a working sentence, but uh, it's sort of difficult. Right, next we place this golden sun here, and ha uh -huh. We are rewarded with a blue crystal and a huge white crystal into the ceiling. Now what I wonder, well... Putting this crystal here seems like a decent idea, so let's get rid of the golden disc first. And we put down this blue crystal. And here comes a wonderful game of Simon. Well, ye yellow-red, that's not hard. Let's see, yellow is over... Yep. This one is time-based as well. If you're not quick enough... It starts over. Right, so yellow, red. Okay. I can do that, right? Mm, no. Too slow. Right, let's actually try and do this, shall we? Yellow. Um, okay, green, purple then. Well, as the more acute of you have probably already figured out, we need to take into consideration the color of the crystal. As you may have noticed, it is blue, which means that the light being transferred through the crystal has an added hue of blue, which means that you actually have to find the reverse combinations of color. Yep. It me this means that green, for example, is actually yellow. And while red is purple. And yes, you no not only need to do it right, you need to finish even more advanced combinations. So let's just hop ahead a bit. Right, this is the last one. Right. 
saying it's six colors and it's uh, red, purple, blue, purple, blue, yellow. And there we go, the path is revealed. But the lava didn't actually go away, so how the hell did we get across? Inca! Right, let's uh, continue working our way through this maze then, shall we? I love mazes. Uh. What's this? There's a piece of bamboo stuck in the wall and we are not allowed to continue moving. That means that we are probably in the right place. So, let's grab that bamboo and uh, open up the door. Exciting! Okay, this is an awfully large room. Hmm. Alright, this is an... Some sort of... Astronomical device. Oh, oh, hey. You can move the white things. Interesting. And so... And one left. Oh, oh. Huh, apparently that wasn't it. Well, actually, the truth is that is it. However, we have to finish with the last moon in the right position. So, what is the right position, you wonder? Well, I'll show you in just a moment. Right. The moon naturally has to be at the bottom, because the sun is supposed to go at the top. Speaking of suns... Aren't we carrying something like that? Hmm... Well... As you have probably realized here, we are supposed to move the moon through its various stages until we find the right stage to set it in. Once we've done that, we can set the golden sun at the top. So, what is the right stage? Well... No moon. Because we only want the sun to appear. And there we are. We are rewarded with the Jewel of Power, the third of the powers, which means that we have found them all. Now to figure out what the hell we are supposed to do with them. Because I haven't the slightest. Well, first things first. Let's grab this. And, uh... Hmm... Well, let's just grab the sun and get out of here. And we're back in the maze. So, where to now, I wonder? Well, straight ahead, luckily. And, uh, let's take a right. Maybe? Let's give it a shot. Hmm, let's take another right. I'm just blindly guessing anyway. Wow. That was a pretty good guess. Did you really think you could escape me, Eldorado? 
I did warn you. I was more than forgiving towards you the first time we met. But you had no idea how to take hold of the hand I held out to you in my infinite generosity. You betrayed the trust I offered you. God is my witness that I tried to bring you round, but you refused to listen to my words of goodness. Prepare to die, Eldorado. <laughs> <laughs>